Good evening. This is Todd Stern. I am your host for Credit Talk Live here on Channel 21 in Chicago. We are also streaming live tonight on Facebook. So hello all my Facebook friends out there. This is a live call-in show. This is about credit, your credit, how to fix your credit, how to get credit, and what makes good and bad credit. So give us a call at 312-738-1060 with your questions, and hopefully we can get to them. So I just do want to announce that this is our last show of the quarter. It has been an awesome season. We're really, really glad to be here. It was exciting. We had all kinds of guests. Uh, we had Jeff Entrotter, Larry Smith, who is going to be back on our show a lot next season. He'll be co-hosting, plus uh, on as a guest, because our questions for each other are just awesome. We get a lot of re response out of that, a lot of feedback. They want more. He was on here last week discussing the whole Equifax breach, which is a real hot topic in the credit world. So again, for anybody out there, you can go to Equifax's website and you can punch in, they have a site where you can punch in the last six of your social and they can basically tell you if you are a victim of their breach. And basically everybody that's called us at the Help Center and we've done this for, we have seen, yes, their file has been impacted. And again, my, my response and Larry Smith, the attorney's response is that we're not that worried. Um, I, I'm, don't, I'm, I hope, hope not that something's going to happen, but the problem is if you opt in for their monitoring service, which to be honest is a bunch of BS if you ask me, a waste, what are they going to do for you? Hey, you know, Mr. Scott, you have something wrong with your credit. Okay, Equifax, what are you going to do? Nothing, but I want to sue you now. Well, I'm sorry you opted in and you waived all your rights, so we're not going to let you sue us. It's going to get right thrown out, of course. So that's why I'm not opting in because if something does happen, then I'm going to have a professional, you know, take care of it. And hopefully, you know, if there's damages, then they're going to pay. Hopefully that's not going to happen because I, I'm not somebody that wants to sue everybody. I've never sued anybody in my life. So I don't want to, and hopefully there aren't any problems. So I do recommend that people do check your credit from now, you know, like probably in the next two to three months, go on a service, pay for it, whatever it is, and check out your credit report, or always give us a call at the Help Center, and that's the number right behind me, the 773-862-4000, and if you have any questions regarding that Equifax breach, you know, give us a call now. You're more than welcome to leave a voicemail, and we can get back to you and tell you exactly what to do, because we do not have a ton of time here to um, discuss every, every little thing. So let's talk about your credit. I call this class credit 101. So let's go to the screen here. And the topics tonight are, what is a credit report? What do lenders look, why do lenders look at my credit? What is a credit score? What kind of credit scores do I need to purchase a home? What if I need a credit and how do I get credit? What if I never had a credit card and I need, and I need to get one now? I have bad, I have a bad credit report, can I do anything about it? So that is really um, a huge topic. So let's talk about what is a credit report? I mean, it's, it sounds simple and a lot of people get it, but boy, we get a lot of people calling us at the help center and they have a credit report, but they just don't know how to read it, which I understand because this is something that, it's not like a newspaper where you're reading every single day. A, a credit report is something that you're gonna look at, you know, maybe once a year. And kind of some people look at it and they scratch their head and go, what the heck is this? So let's go over what it is. It contains personal data, meaning your name, address, sometimes phone numbers, job history, a summary of your credit history, meaning who your credit cards are with, your payment pattern, um, balances, detailed account information that's covered in that, balances, inquiries. Every time you apply for a credit card, you're going to get what's called an inquiry on your report. That's going to basically show who is the person that pulled your credit report. And then also details of negative information, late pays, collections, judgments. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second, but let's go to our first call. Hello, caller. 
Hi, Todd. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I Fantastic. Just have a question regarding that Equifax breach. Oh, yeah. Here we go. CEO resigns. Yes, we did see that today. Walks away with about $50 million. Boy, I should do something bad, huh? Wow. Yeah, I, yeah not too hard to take. Golden parachute. Now, my question is, just like you, I went on and uh, I am also been victim of uh, the hack. Hey. So, uh, well, nothing ha say nothing happens for a year. I mean, when do we file suit? Isn't uh, I know you're not an attorney, but how about the statute of limitations on this? You know, here's the okay. thing. There was a very interesting article in the newspaper about that the other day. So as Larry Smith explained, and me and him actually had a, a nice conversation the other day, and he discussed this last week on our show, that you have to prove damages. So if they broke into the system, okay, they broke into the system, but a court of law is going to want to see damages. If there's no damages, and let's say your credit report is fine and nothing ever happens, you're not going to be able to sue them. Now, somebody might be able to sue them over something else, some fancy attorney for something, but... I don't think they're going to get very far, and so does Larry. He doesn't think that's really going to happen unless, <clears throat> you know, all of a sudden your credit report starts getting victimized. There's open credit on there, um, you know, collections and stuff from these people that don't pay. But so far, I have not heard of that happening. And we have a lot of people calling us at the help center, and we've helped them obtain credit reports and everything, and we have not seen any fraud. And I really don't think it is. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that it was just some computer guy that just, you know, says, oh, I got into the system. Look at me. Yay, yay. Or, you know, somebody in a foreign country. God only knows what they're doing. And they were able to penetrate the system, just kind of like taking a car out for a joyride. And really, at the end of the day, hopefully nothing happens from this. So um, let's just keep our fingers crossed. Have you seen... You haven't seen anything? Have you checked your report yet? I uh, uh, yes. Nothing. Okay. And any any problems? Nope. Good. Well, I would just suggest you know, to you. Uh, I mean, you're the expert. They recommend freezing all three. Yeah, okay. but I'd hold on. I'm not doing. Listen, I yes, I am the expert. I've been doing this for thirty years, and I'm not freezing my accounts because I don't think it's necessary. And then the problem is when you're going to want to get into it. And you can't because it's uh, some creditor wants to get in there because it's frozen. That's going to be a problem. So I would just keep monitoring your credit report, check it, and uh, if there's an issue, you know, then I'd say, you know, give us a call at the help center, and we can point you in the right direction on what to do. But I'm not overly concerned about that. Okay. Well, thank you for your help and. Uh... You guys have done good by me. Thank you. If anyone has credit problems, give Todd a call. He's got a great staff there. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling the Help Center. Again, the number at the Help Center is 773-862-4000. So we do take a lot of calls there regarding situations, regarding your credit. Uh, a lot of people just don't want to discuss this on the air. So let's go back to our Credit 101. Everybody's in class today. I know some of us, it's been a while since we've been out of school, but, well... It's fun. So let's go back. Details of, an, of your negative credit information. Well, what is that? You know, every time you make your payments on a credit card, that gets reported. So if you're late, you're going to get a ding. You're going to get a 30-day late. What does that do to your score? Well, it lowers your score. So make sure that your payments are on time. And I prefer doing everything auto-debit. So remember, have... If you have a loan through Ally Financial, whoever it might be, Wells Fargo Bank, whatever it might be, and they're pulling for your car, doing your car payment, have them pull the money from your bank account. Because I don't like it. You can set up where your bank sends it to them or you control it. We have seen problems where when the bank sends it to them and there's some sort of glitch and the other finance company that's handling the financing on your car doesn't receive it, and you'll be like, well, I sent you the payment on the 25th. And they're like, well, we never got it. The problem is now you're at fault. And if it's vice versa and they're drawing the money out of your account and there's a glitch on their end, hey, as long as you can prove that you had money in the account at that time, you're, it's not your fault and you weren't late. So it's real important. I prefer letting them take the money out of your account. So make sure that 
you have funds in your account when those payments are due. So here's a big question, you know, why do lenders look at my credit report? Real simple, to determine your ability to pay back the loan. So obviously they're not going to lend you uh, $500,000 if you're making, you know, $15,000 a year and you're right out of school. So they're gonna to wanna to look at it. If your income can sustain the type of loan that you're looking for and your credit worthiness that, hey, you've got a high FICO score, you're in the 700s, you pay your loans on time, you pay all your bills on time. That's what they want to see. Bottom line is it's nothing personal. They Creditors want to get paid back. They don't want to get cheated. Just as if you lend money to somebody, you want to make sure you get paid back, which usually turns out to be, be a nightmare, especially lending to friends because... They, they, well, they say they're going to pay you back and then trying to get to a whole other animal, but that is what it is. So let's talk about credit scores and how they are calculated. So it's really uh, important here, and I'm going to enlarge this a little bit first before I put it on the screen. So let's go here. Okay, so let's talk about the right side column, the FICO scores, and... Basically, look at the percentages. So payment history. That's what I was talking about, why you want to pay on time. 35% of your credit score is based on your payment history. Number two, length of credit, 15%. So as I tell people, even if you clean up all your negative information, you go and get two secure credit cards that you've had open for two, three months, with a two, three hundred dollar credit limit, you're not going to be a 700 credit score because you have no history. Another thing that is really important, we'll look at credit reports and they have no derogatory information, amounts owed, 30% of the credit limit. So right there alone, amounts owed and payment history total 65% of your credit score. So amounts owed, and the, the magic number on that is 30%. So anytime you're over 30% of the credit limit, that will start lowering your credit score. Make it real easy. You have a $1,000 credit limit. Anytime you go over $300, that is going to lower your credit score. So you gotta be real careful, especially with those small ones. I've seen them, you know, $300, $500 credit limits. Now you owe $250, which is not hard to do with the way things cost now. And now you're way over that 30% and that's gonna lower your uh, credit rating as well. The trick with credit cards is that you have your card, keep the balances low, try to pay them off in full, and after time, these banks will start raising the credit limit, or you can request a credit increase as well. So that's something that you might want to do down the, down the road. A couple other factors, um, types of credit, 10%, new credit, 10%. You know, not the, not the end of the world, but again, biggest factors, Payment history and amount. So that's what we tell people at the center all the time. We'll look at credit reports that have no derogatory information, and then, <clears throat> but they have high balances. That's the problem. But usually it's a catch-22 where the reason that they have high balances is because money is tight and they can't pay it. So, you know, you have to pay the consequence with that as well. Now, what they really don't list on this little chart here is what's really going to lower your score is negative information. Anything bad, collections, late payments, um, judgments, bankruptcies, all that stuff is going to hurt your score. And in that situation, you know, I've talked about this before, credit repair is great for you. Go on Google, search in Chicago. There's a couple of companies. I'm not mentioning their names, but just read reviews. Look who's got the best reviews. Call them. You want to make sure that they're a real legit place. They have an office. Make sure they're registered, that their paperwork, they provide you a full contract, full disclosures. They have to provide you consumer disclosures, two notices of cancellation. So what is that? Basically, you have three business days. It's just like people who do a refinance on their home. You have three business days to kill the deal. So basically, with a credit repair company, the, um, fair, the uh, FTC basically says that if somebody wants to stop after a day or two, they can cancel for a full refund. 
So if they don't provide you that information, oh, another huge thing is no advance fees. So it has to be a month-to-month -month program. So if somebody tells you, oh, give me X amount of dollars for um, six months, no, that's an advance fee, so I'd stay away from them. So let's go to our next call. Hello, caller. Hey, good evening. I have a question. So I'm looking at uh, trying to possibly look at buying a house, maybe like in about two years. And my, my credit right now is, you know, not great. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, I, I, I don't know if I'd be approved now. But like, so in the two years, like, what do I need to do to help get my credit on, on the road to recovery? Well, the first thing you need to do is do a, a review of your credit report. Have you actually looked at your report yet or lately? I, I have. It's, 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 thank goodness it's slowly on, on the rise. Okay. You know, so I'm. You know, so it's it's, but it's it's not making the advances like you know. I, I want to get you know as low of a you know of an interest rate sure. as possible, and at the same time trying to save money for the down payment. Right. Well, that's a good thing, and I always tell people nobody saves a lot of money fast. You save a lot of money a little at a time. So if your goal is to have you know twenty thousand dollar down payment in in two years, just take your twenty thousand, divide it per month, divide it by even fifty two. And each week, put that money aside in a savings account dedicated just for that down payment because you're going to say it's going to be a lot easier doing it that way. Number two, it's, I know it's two years away, but it's not even a bad idea to talk to a bank or a mortgage broker or a banker because they're going to also tell you what you need to do. A lot of times, people's financials aren't in good shape as far as uh, they don't keep good records. Maybe they haven't filed tax returns. We have a lot of people that come into the center in the same situation, I'll say, well, how do your uh, you know, 2016 returns look? I haven't filed them. How about 15? I haven't filed them. When's the last time you filed one? Six years ago? Well, you're never going to get a mortgage when you don't file tax returns because you have to see it. So that you want to make sure you're up to date with it, all your taxes are paid, that you don't have any judgments and liens. So definitely, you know, work on that. But working with a mortgage broker you know, and there's a lot of good ones out there that can point you in the right direction as well and kind of tell you, you know, based on your income, you think you're going to have this much down. Well, you know, Mr. Client, you're going to be able to buy a house up to, you know, $400,000. So now in your mind, you got that instead of you thinking you're going to buy one that's six hundred grand, because now you're looking on the Internet and everything at houses that are $600,000. And when you got to start looking at the $400,000 house, which there's plenty of nice ones, there's a big difference between the price range, you know. So, you know, try to get pre-qualified as well. And again, if you have any questions, always give us a call at the Help Center. We'll be more than happy to point you in the right direction and have you talk to the right people. Okay, I think our caller is hung up. So that's those are very, very important um, things that you need to do to purchase a home. That's where we get so many people wanting to purchase homes and that's an excellent question you have what should you do don't wait to the last second to start figuring things out get your ducks in a row you know make sure you have your bank statements keep your bank statements you know or if you have them online and have access to them because a mortgage broker is going to want to see two to three months of bank statements they're going to see x of money now if somebody is gifting you money or giving you money it needs to be seasoned so you can't have money go in two weeks before you are going to try to make this loan application because they're going to question it. It's going to send up red flags. You're allowed to get a gift from your parents up to a certain amount. I'm not 100% sure what that is. We've had mortgage brokers on the show before discussing that. But just don't wait to the last second. But number one thing, get a copy of your credit report and review it. Give us a call. I'll be more than happy to review it for you. Uh, you know, I'll take a look at it. It's a free service, and I'd be more than happy to look at it for you and tell you what your thought, my thoughts are. Um, speaking of homes, let's talk about <clears throat> what kind of credit score do I need to purchase a home? Well, you can get a loan with scores as low as 640, but the higher your credit score is, the better type of loan you're going to get. So the, a real popular loan today is called an FHA loan. And that's where you're going to put very little down, and the, but you need a score of at least 640. Uh, let's put that on hold for a second. Let's go to our next call. Hello, caller. Hi. Um, if I have a student loan on uh, my credit and I have a change in job, 
so my salary is less and I call and ask for that uh, loan payment to be adjusted, will that affect my credit negatively? No, it's not going to affect it as long as, now I see this all the time on credit reports, especially with student loans. You've got to stay on top of those things because once they start going bad, they're bad and you start getting late payments. But no, it should, it should actually help. Now, one, one of two things. Hopefully, you got a new job with a higher salary. So I wouldn't call them on that situation because what they're going to do then is they're going to raise your payment. But unless you just don't care and just Actually, want to pay the this thing off. Actually, the opposite. You took a pay cut. I'm sorry? A pay cut. Yes, would... definitely call them and let them know that, you know, because it's based on your income as well. And they're more than happy to work on it, work on it with you. But just make sure that while this process is going on, you know, that as long as you can still make these payments, make the payments or if they can defer it, um, do that. But you don't want to miss any payments because if you get marked late on your student loan that you had a good credit score, it's going to just it's going to tank out. So you don't want to do it. But definitely too many people bury their heads in the sand when it comes to student, student loans. But you're doing the right thing. I would definitely stay on top of it. Give them a call and talk to them and they'll lower the payment for you. You've got to provide documentation showing that your salary has, has decreased. But, you know, listen, they want to get paid back as well and they want to make it affordable to you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Yep, student loans, we see them all day long at the Help Center and tax things. So those two items, even if you think, oh, I don't care, I'll file a bankruptcy down the line. Unfortunately, they're not dischargeable through a bankruptcy. So you're going to have to pay them. And then if you're a W-2 employee, meaning somebody that has taxes taken out of their checks and you get a refund, they're going to, you know, eventually they're going to grab that refund. So you're not going to get a refund. And that's going to get credited towards either the tax lien or the student loan. But hopefully you're not going to have these issues. So uh, just biggest thing is stay on top of it. Okay, a question we get a lot at the Help Center too is, Basically, real simple. What if I never had a credit before and how do I get credit? Real easy. We tell people it's called a secured credit card. Well, what is a secured credit card? It's basically all the major banks except the big blue, who I'm not going to say their name. They don't offer it, but a lot of the other big ones do, where you're going to basically put money in an account. They have special accounts. So you can put 500. Some of them go up to as high as even 10,000 I've seen. So whatever amount of dollars that you put in the account, they're going to give you that matching credit limit. So if you put $1,000 in, they're going to give you a credit limit of $1,000. <clears> As I tell people, it's not that I want you to go out and have, get, take this credit card and have a good time. You need to build credit. And by doing this, it's going to show on your credit report each month that you make a payment. Maybe use it a couple times, and then it will show up on your credit report. Throw it in the drawer, keep it as a tool. It's just a crutch. Maybe get two of those, two or three of those things if you don't have any good credit. And eventually, maybe six months, eight months down the line, as long as you've paid on time, your balances are below 30%, then apply for maybe a regular credit card. But slow and steady wins the race. That's what I tell people all the time. If you start applying for way too many um, credit cards, you're going to get turned down. So it's really important. Just do it slow and steady, and that's what's going to win the race. So, um, okay, so we've touched base on a lot of items here tonight. You know, what are credit reports? Obviously, it's a tool that banks use to determine your credit worthiness of bottom line. Paying them back. They want their money. So it's real important to have good credit. We talked about student loans. Credit repair, as everybody knows, I'm a big fan of it. It works. I've seen a ton of credit reports that they've taken bad reports and they've been able to fix them. If you have credit fraud, what to do about that. We talked about Equifax and things out there to you know do. If you have problems with it, go online, check. But I am not opting in on that service because it's you're basically waiving all your rights. So, okay, we literally have about 10 more seconds left of the show. I do want to thank... Everybody here at Can TV for this quarter. We're going to be back on in about four months. So I know it's you're going to have credit talk withdrawals. If you really need to talk to us, give us a call at the Help Center at 773-862-4000. I want to thank our producer, Marisol. She's done a fabulous job over the quarter here. Some of our guests, Larry, Jeff, 
Olivia, oh my gosh, that Olivia show was probably one of the best shows ever. It was a hit. It was the number one show here at Can TV. I was told the reruns just went crazy. YouTube views, and also we are on YouTube. So check us out. Uh, go to YouTube, uh, Credit Talk, Can TV Chicago. I will see you in a couple months. Have a wonderful winter. Hopefully, you can do something fun. Maybe go skiing. Until then, have a great evening. Thanks a lot for watching.